after all, warm presentation. <laughs> I would like to present uh, the bigger part of the Prima Secunda. I did a, like a Benedictine job on focusing who is quoted and in what place. And I would like to share with you some results of this search with some remarks about it. Let's start uh, our program. Basically, I would like to present a general picture of the sources to see how many fathers of the church do we have in comparison with others, like Aristotle or sacred scripture. And then we will look more closely uh, what, uh, how Aquinas uses the fathers. So let's start with the structure of the Summa as a point of departure. As that's probably obvious for all of us, but still it's quite important uh, to see the structure of uh, Prima Pars, the consideration of uh, anthropology, which is structure basically, I believe, on Aristotle and Pseudo Dionysius. Aquinas shows that in the prologue uh, in Prima Pars to the question 75. He quotes Pseudo Dionysius and says, Tria inveniuntur in substantis spiritualibus, scibice essentia virtus et operatio, and follows this distinction in his Summa, obviously. Uh, Father Thomas Stempit has shown yesterday at his presentation the importance of that, and that's a key also for treatise about God and the angels and so on. When we look uh, to the structure of the Summa, we can enlarge it in such a way to see that Aquinas is extremely consistent in applying this distinction into also his moral considerations. As you can see, we have the consideration of the essence of human being in, in prima pars. In prima secunda, before going to moral acts, Aquinas introduces the part of the Summa which I would like to focus on, especially because it links the anthropological considerations with secunda secunda analysis of virtues, vices, gifts of the Holy Spirit, and so on. So this is precisely the reason uh, why I have chosen this piece of the Summa, which is quite essential and important. If you would like to see the structure of uh, this place, we will see uh, that Aquinas begins with a very philosophical and dense place about habitus, which is a notion taken from Aristotle. Then we have a bigger part about virtues and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I would like to notice that he considers as actus perfecti, according to this distinction, the potentia, uh, habitus, and actus as the acts he considers beatitudes and fructus. That's why I put them all together. And after all, I skip the, the last part, not to enlarge too much this research, so I skip the vices and sin. I have uh, checked uh, different places quoted by Aquinas, and I arrived to a number of 672 quotations. And I would like to show the general picture of what is in this number. So we have Aristotle 291, the Holy Scripture 182, Fathers of the Church, 129, and other sources, as you can see. So this gives us a general picture 
what it looks like when we see uh, the sources in general. When Aquinas, for example, quotes somebody in the objection and uh, refers to the name in the answer to it, I count it as one place. If he adds some new quotation, then I count it as twice. To make it easier in further comparison, uh, I divided this part of the summa into four sections with A, B, C, and D letter to make easier further reference to them. So we will start first with the habitus. That's what you can see. There are in these five questions of the Summa 140 citations. 107 belongs to Aristotle. So as you can see, basically, we have philosophical treatise only three times the Holy Scripture, eight times Fathers of the Church, and 22 times other sources, mainly Simplicius and Pseudo Dionysius. I divided, to make it simpler, the treatise on virtues into three parts, essentia subjectum, distinction among intellectual, moral, theological virtues, and then causa et proprietatis. As you can see, Aquinas more or less gives six quotations per article, more or less, so that's quite stable. So we can now see in each section of, the on, of this treatise on virtues what it looks like. So first, we have Essentia Virtutis et Subjectum, Virtutis 60 quotations, Aristotle is 35, the Holy Scripture five times, Fathers only St. Augustine 13 times, and what is important in this section that the definition of virtue is based on Augustine definition from his uh, writings. I would like to remind when we talk about this uh, second part of the treatise on virtues, what we are talking about. We are talking about intellectual virtues, moral virtues, the comparison between moral virtues and passions, uh, then between among themselves, moral virtues, cardinal virtues, and at the end we have theological virtues. We can see how many Aquinas takes from Nicomachean ethics and enlarges it with theological picture. The proportions are as follows. There are 150 references. Aristotle is 79, the scripture 22, Fathers of the Church 25, and others uh, 24. So now it's become more and more balanced, less Aristotle, more other sources, as you can see. We go to causa and proprietates, uh, which uh, in this place we have 157 citations. Again, Aristotle is dominant. Uh, 59 quotations, 54 from the scripture, 29 from the fathers, uh, seven other theological and philosophical sources, eight others. There are much more quotations from the scripture, less of Aristotle, but still he is the first on the list of the sources in this place. Uh, I would like to focus on one place, which is just in this uh, place. From the point of view of the sources, this is a very interesting place, because Aquinas gives us a very wide range of two sets of different solutions 
in two different topics, which can be, however, seen in an analogical way. Let's begin the first column with the question about the forms in the bodies. Where are they from? First position, they can be only from within, Anaxagoras. Second position from some exterior cause, third partially from the interior in materia and partially from the exterior, causa agents. And Aquinas shows in an analogical way that's the case also for science and virtues and identifies different sources. I find this article is very interesting to show to the students because it shows us different types of sources and different solutions. First is according to Platonici, we have science within and we remove the obstacles. Then the second is Avicenna, we can recall to mind the film Matrix, that's from outside, the whole knowledge is from outside. And the third from Aristotle, that from nature we have aptitudo or inhoatio, but perfection comes from elsewhere. By the way, Aquinas notices also that only the theological virtues are totally from exterior, from God. So he realizes all the time the limitations of the sources which he uses. I think I presented in a mistaken way earlier that, that numbers, 157, um, 59 Aristotle, 54 scripture, and as I told, still the Aristotle is first on the list. Now we go to a more theological uh, section of the Summa. We have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can see at once that Aristotle is diminished, but not, did not disappear, though. Beside the good habits understood as virtues, we have as habits the gifts of the Holy Spirit in eight articles. So we have a shorter part of the Summa, so there are less citations. Again, we can see how Aquinas uses the Aristotelian frame, habitus actus, and combines it with theological notions. Here we have seven times Aristotle, 39 scripture, 33 fathers. No other sources in this place. For the first time, Aristotle can be seen as in the minority. And in order to confirm the, this Aristotelian frame, you can see the article, the third article, Utrum Dona Spiritus Sanctis in Habitus, directly the question which focus on that. We are coming to the close of this general picture. We have last two theological places, Beatitudes and Fructus, 86 uh, citations for Aristotle, uh, 59 the scripture, 21 fathers, two gloss and Dionysius. So we can now see it in total to have a panoramic picture in the, in the entire part of the Summa. Uh, as you see, nearly half of the citations are from Aristotle, quarter from the scripture, and quarter the rest. If you would like to see it more exactly, this is a panoramic picture in numbers. You can see that Aquinas quotes Aristotle all the time, but the proportions uh, are contrary to the reference to the Holy Scripture. So you can see that the number of citations from Aristotle decreases while the Scripture increases. But still he is constantly present and more present than fathers of the Church, if we take it in singular, which is also quite striking. So we can see fathers in details. We have a general picture, so we can focus now on what it is like when we consider uh, fathers. We will start this time 
from the panoramic view to have it at once in one, one chart. So you can see uh, on the, in the first column the part of the summa which is indicated and later on columns with the, those fathers who are most frequent in this place of the summa. As you can easily notice, St. Augustine is most frequently quoted 75 times altogether. Then we have St. Gregory the Great, 32, St. Ambrose, 11 times, and a few other sources. At the end, you can see the total number of quotations from the fathers in comparison with how many times Aristotle is quoted. So that gives also a comparison how Aristotle is still present there. If you would like to see the proportions among the fathers, that's what I've said, how many times, that, how it looks like graphically. So now we can go to details to see whom he quotes in each section and how. <clears throat> in this philosophical piece about habitus, this philosophical treatise very special for Aquinas in this entire picture of human action, there are eight references to the fathers, five belong to St. Augustine, different places and different works, the Octoginta Trium Questionum, Supergenesiat Literam, the Bolo Coniugali, uh, and the Trinitate. Aquinas quotes Augustine taking from him some places useful for the construction of a precise description of what he means by habitus, but they are not really essential because the essential comes from Aristotle and his philosophical uh, writings. There is one interesting and strictly theological island in these five questions. Considering the subject of habitus, Aquinas asks about the angels in question 50, article 6. Utrum in angelis sit aliquis habitus. Precisely there you may find these three quotations of St. Maximus Confessor as commentator and in the company of Serda Dionysius. We can see how many quotations we can find in the Treatise on Virtues. Basically, there are less fathers in the middle section, when Aquinas considers uh, intellectual, moral, uh, cardinal virtues altogether. In this place, when Aquinas speaks about the essence of virtue, as I mentioned, the central position takes St. Augustine because of his definition of virtues. Virtus as bona qualitas mentis, qua recta vivitur, qua nullus male utitur, quam deus in nobis sine nobis operator. Aquinas praises the definition, it's a great, but refines it. So he says that it would be better to replace ha ha uh, qualitas with habitus and he notices that the last particula in nobis sine nobis operatur could be and should be taken away because if we don't take it, it's definition of infused virtues. We go to distinction of the virtues. We can see here especially the synthesis of Aquinas and how he combines the intellectual, moral, and theological virtues in a systematic way. Aristotelian teleological frame is enlarged in such a way that it becomes able to embrace the supernatural finality and supernatural theological virtues. Among the sources, we can see again the important role of St. Augustine, but in a different manner. In question 59, Aquinas considers the relationship between the moral virtues and passions, and in this place Aquinas follows St. Augustine and his presentation and interpretation of the discussion between the Stoics and Peripatetics, the 9th and 14th book, the Civitate Dei, 
which Aquinas summarizes in extent way in question 59, article 2 and 3 especially. Aquinas follows St. Augustine and his diagnosis. Both groups define differently the passions and so they come to different conclusions. St. Gregory and St. Ambrose appear in the context of cardinal virtues and their connections. The rest of quotations do not play any essential role. Now we can see the section which is about causa virtutum and proprietates. I mean, medium connexio equalitas duratio. Augustine is quoted quite often, but please note that Ar the, uh, Aristotle is quoted three times more than Bishop of Hippo. If you look, uh, it's 20 times St. Augustine and uh, 59 Aristotle, just to have a comparison. The Glossa Augustini refers to passage which underlines how useless are the virtues without faith. Augustine underlines the priority of charity and that the other virtues are connected by this theological virtue. These quotations, however, seem to enrich rather than guide the main reflection of Aquinas using different sources altogether. For example, in question 65, first article, Utrum virtutes morales sint ad invicem connexa, in the set contra Aquinas recalls three fathers in a similar way, Ambrose, Augustine, and Gregory the Great. The Moralia of the Gregory the Great will appear two more times, once when Aquinas explains the connections of virtues, and another time in the objection, which refers to the temporal character of via, vita activa in relation to the life post hack hank vitam, question 67, first article. We go to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. What is interesting here that the priority is given here to St. Gregory the Great. For 33 citations from the Fathers, 24 belongs just to him, nearly exclusively from his Moralia. Just one exception from In Prima Homilia Ezechielis. St. Gregory gives broad allegor allegorical reading of Book of Job with uh, seven sons of Job signify the gifts of the Holy Spirit, three daughters, three theological virtues, four cornerstones of the house, four cardinal virtues, and so on. Gregory connects the gifts. Uh, the image, uh, the sons prepare banquets in their houses in sequence. One gift needs other for the proper interior balance. For instance, the gift of the fear needs the gift of fortitude. Aquinas quotes longer paraphrases and quotations, that's why we arrive to such a higher number from St. Gregory, about each gift and what is proper to it for this life and for eternal life. In question 68, article 6, at second. St. Gregory was the authority for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but in the next two questions, there is not even one quotation from him in the Beatitudes and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We have again St. Augustine and St. Ambrose. What is curious, they explain them in a different way. They, even the explanations seem to exclude one another. Augustine connects the gifts with the Beatitudes in Matthew, whereas St. Ambrose connects the Beatitudes from Luke with the cardinal virtues. So we have gifts of the Holy Spirit and cardinal virtues on the other side. And also they explain differently the premia, the rewards of the Beatitudes. Augustine with this life, Ambrose with the life to come. What is striking, Aquinas reconciliates the fathers with some wider picture taken from Aristotle. 
I mean this structure habitus actus that observes that one name acts from the habitus. That gives us this freedom to name the acts from habitus in different ways. That's a question 69, article 1st, at primum. Augustinus et Ambrosius attribuunt beatitudines donis et virtutibus sicut actus attribuuntur habitibus. Dona autem sunt eminentiora virtutibus cardinalibus ut supra dictum est. Et ideo Ambrosius exponens beatitudines turbis propositas attribuit eas virtutibus cardinalibus. Augustinus autem exponens beatitudines discipulis propositas in monte, tam fan perfectionibus attribuit eas donis spiritus sancti. This way of attribution allows us to go both, both direction, and that's how two fathers are reconciliated. Considering the premia, Aquinas recalls the third father of the church, John Chrysostomus, who proposed compromise. Partially, premia belongs belong to this life and partially to the eternal life. The second uh, time when Aquinas quotes Chrysostomus is when he refers to objection which proceeds from the inconveniency of the enumerated and different merits in relation to eternal life, since everything is contained in it anyway. Chrysostomus explains, because we do not know what eternal life is like, so we have to multiply the examples known to us in order to get at least some idea of eternal life. Just a few concluding remarks after this search in quotations and statistics and numbers and where Aquinas quotes whom. First, I would like to underline the importance of structure because it hides some quotations and inspirations which cannot be easily visible, but they are really profound. And especially it helps to appreciate the way in which Aquinas connects the ideas. We can see this potentia habitus actus beside the whole picture, which is crowned at the level of uh, actus with beatitudes and fruits, whereas at the level of habitus by vir virtus and dona spiritus sant. That's first remark. Second is that everywhere Aristotle is present, so we are all the time discussing with this frame behind. The third is that uh, we could see uh, St. Augustine especially uh, in definition of virtue and his way of uh, referring to Stoics and Peripatetics uh, when, he, when Aquinas talks about how we relate moral virtues and passions, which also take a lot from Nicomachean ethics. And we could see St. Gregory the Great that he was dominant in the question on gifts. Interesting point was that how Aquinas reconciliates St. Augustine and St. Ambrose with help of Aristotle, which sounds quite unusual, but still we can see how it helps. So, thank you very much for your attention.